today I want to tell you about um, managing complex form with the survey JS library. Um, so this is um, agenda of our today's meeting. I'm going to tell you about how uh, what survey JS is, how to set up into React project. Um, how to render survey elements dynamically, uh, load data asynchronously about validation, uh, handling events, and uh, about customization. So let's get started. Well, what is SurveyJS? It's a UI component library that allows you to render a JSON-based forms in any JavaScript application um, when it can be useful. Um, Actually, everywhere, um, it's perfect for creating online surveys, polls, uh, feedback forms, quizzes with different question types. Um, when you need to create forms that adjust dynamically uh, depending on uh, user input. Um, for complex multi-step or multi-page forms, such as onboarding flows, multi-step registration processes, where data is collected um, for um, several steps. Um, for form that required complex validation rules or condition, survey JS um, allows you validate both, both um, with built-in techniques and uh, customized. And for application where user input is complex, required custom layouts, reusable components, or integration with external systems. Let's talk a bit about um, a survey structure. Um, the survey itself is a top level object. Um, it is the entire form um, or questionnaire which consists of one of more pages and define the structure, behavior and data collection logic. The survey object might have pages. It's a single section of survey containing some group of related questions. Um, this is an optional element. Um, we define we normally define pages um, if we are talking about um, multi-step or uh, multi-page surveys. Uh, then goes a panel. Um, actually, panel is used to group questions uh, within one page. It's also optional. Uh, you can nest the panels one into each other as deep as you need. And finally, the element. This is like um, Element is some kind of user interaction. Um, uh, it's an individual item such as question, text input, drop down. Um, element is the one with uh, um, which user interacts. Well, okay. Now we're ready to set up our first survey. Um, um, we will do it in two steps. First, uh, we need to install SurveyJS library um, to your application. You can do it with your favorite uh, package manager. I'm doing it just with the NPM, like this NPM install, and that's it. And the second uh, step will be um, a basic setup. Um, first, we need to create a JSON model. As I already told you, SurveyJS uh, render it from the uh, JSON model um, and render it within a form. Uh, one thing I want to point out um, out about is the element types. I will not just stop by on every each element type, but you can see that there are pretty lot, a lot of them. It's text, dropdowns, radio groups, um, file uploading, and so on. Okay, at this point, I will start my demonstration. I will be switching between my ID browser and um, Mm, presentation. Mm, this is 
uh, a simple React project that I set it up for um, this presentation. Um, you can see the structure of project is SRC um, folder with aptSX file with um, a model to s here we have our JSON uh, model and with package JSON and other files. Okay, um, the app.tsx is um, entry point to um, my project. And here I render just um, two elements. It's um, header, but this is gonna be a patient registration form and um, a survey. Um, the survey component is um, imported from the library and it has required um, um, uh, requirement property is the model. Uh, model is the object which we create using the um, model constructor. Model constructor or all, also um, imported from the SurveyJS library. In this constructor, we pass our JSON configuration. So let's take a look at it. Uh, as I already told you, um, here you can define pages, element, and so on. I don't have pages here. It's just simple form with two elements. First uh, will be the first name. The name field ref refers to the identifier of the question. Title you will see mm, on the UI and type text. This means this is a text field. So let's see what we have in the browser. Yeah. This is our form. Um, as you can see, everything what is what expected. Well, um, let's make things a little bit difficult by adding some dynamic fields. I will switch a branch. Yeah, as you can see, I have added here two more questions. Um, first new question is a radio group question. And this radio group ha question has two choices, yes and no. Yeah, and it will be asked, would, would the patient like to book, book visit online? And the second one is the date picker question. Um, I defined it with the input type date and the main point I would like to emphasize here is this visible if property. If I define this visible if property, it means that this question will be diff will be visible um, if um, this expression here returns true. Um, so, um, here we have the expression where I defined uh, the visit question. This is a previous question and the answer is yes. So um, the second date question will be visible if the on the previous question user answered yes. And let's try. Yeah, switching to the browser. Yeah, we can see a third. Uh, first, second, and third question here, and let's press yes. And yes, here we have a date picker, can pick a date. And if um, I change my mind and press no, this will, will disappear like this. Yeah. Um, so let's move on. Um, we will talk a bit now about drop down questions. Again, changing branches. Yeah. Um, here I added two drop down questions. The first drop down question is a specialist. We will offer our user to choose a specialist they would like to book a visit. And again, um, to add drop down question, I just need to um, add type drop down and some array of choices. This drop down question has predefined array of choices. Yeah. 
Um, this is like cardiologist, psychologist, dermatologist, and other. But what if I want to add a question when choices or this menu or drop down? Um, if if I want to load it asynchronously from the server, um, actually ServerJS gives us this ability, and it's pretty much easy. And this is a second question I added. As you can see here, I also have question of type drop down, its name country. And instead of array of choices, I have this property choices by URL. And this is an object where I configure all my um, logic or retrieving um, data from server. This is a URL string and value and title name. It's um, like value name, um, the property which will be set it as a result of your survey and title name which will be used to dis uh, for display. Um, in this case, they are pretty much the same, the name and name. Um, and let's see what we have. Yeah, again, we will press yes and we will see two more questions right now and this is uh, our static drop down with different types of um, specialists we can put in some value and a country and yes we have a, like a full list of countries which are loaded asynchronously um, Um, everything as expected. Well, I think we can move on. Um, next feature I would like to show you here is a validation. Yeah, validation is a crucial thing for every survey. And um, talking about survey chess, um, we can apply here two types of validation. First is a built-in and second is a custom. Let, let's take a look on the um, built-in validation. To make fill required, we can just define uh, set property is required to truth and this will uh, make our field required. This will add the asterisk and um, prevents a um, user from finishing um, if there is no value provided. And also required error text also in place. Um, let's take a look what we have. Yeah, uh, red asterisk um, appears here. If I not provided any value, we will see field is required, everything as expected. Um, if we want to validate user input, we will add some additional validators. Here I, for uh, text fields, added um, um, regular expression validation that allows user to um, prompt only letters and um, spaces. Yeah, and user will see um, validation error that only letters are allowed if they um, put in something different. So let's see. We can, I can put in some string here and we will see that validation will, dis will disappear for, for this particular field yeah this particular field is okay but here we can add some or here we can add some numbers to this um, name and we'll see what we will have yeah we will see right now a message here that only letters are allowed so like this um there are and other types of validators. This is a regular expression validators. Also, um, also there are numeric validators, email validator. You can um, read about all of them in the documentation. Um, uh, 
Okay, we will move next to custom validation. In case this built-in validation don't fulfill your project needs, you can add a custom validation. Uh, to add custom validation, you have to attach um, a built-in event um, on the survey object. Um, this is on validate validate question event is built in, you just attach it and pass a callback to it with your custom logic. This callback accepts two parameters. First, survey, it's an object with uh, the whole uh, form. And second one is options. Option, options is an event trigger. The question that triggered um, this event, um, on validate question event will be triggered every time when any question are validated and you can uh, filter them uh, using the option name property so here i can see that option name uh, property i validate only the first name field if um, lens um, less than two characters we will see an error that your answer is too short. Um, actually, it can be any logic here. It's This is just an example of how to use this um, event handler. So let's see. Yeah. And now I leave just one letter and trigger a validation. And yeah, we can see here a validation error that answer is too short. Okay, I think we can move on. I will tell you a bit more about events that are existing in this library. There are actually a pretty much number of events, but I will cover here just two of them. Uh, the first one is on value changed. This is also built in event. You, you pass here a callback with actually the same um, parameters, um, the survey and the options, which the object which triggers um, an event. Um, again, here, uh, on value changed event will be fired every single time when any field changes. No, um, this is not attached to any specific question. You have to filter um, questions like here by name um, within this um, callback. Here, um, the logic I want to achieve. Um, if user changes his mind and uh, chosen spe another specialist, um, I want to uh, reset a value in the date field. So here I see that options name is specialist. Okay, I understand that a user changed the specialist and then I um, reset date value. Let's take a look. Yeah. We'll choose some specialist, choose a date. And once user changes specialist, the date field will be um, cleared. Yeah. Another event I want to show you right now it's incomplete event. This event triggered once user hit it, hit the button complete. And within this event, you actually can do everything um, like to finish your survey, wherever you can show the data, you can uh, um, send it to the backend or process it somehow. Uh, right now, I will show you just all the survey data, um, which is collected when user finishes um, their survey. Yeah. Let's add some data here.
Yeah. And complete. And here in console, we can see all the survey data, so it can be um, process it wherever, wherever you want to process it. And actually the last feature I want to stop by for today, it's a customization. Um, as you can see, we use here um, a default theme. Uh, actually, Survey Jazz has a lot of built-in themes. All of them um, you can see in the official website. And if um, you still need some customization, you still need uh, to define your um, custom team, you can always do it. Um, here I created already uh, prepared some custom team. This template is, uh, is quite big and uh, complex, but you can um, just um, copy it from the official documentation and use it wherever you want. This um, uh, this is every um, property refers to some CSS properties like um, general back color, colors, fonts, uh, and so on. Um, I already created um, my um, custom theme and we will now apply it. Uh, here we have a team that, uh, that I um, imported from the um, survey and let's apply custom. Yeah, as you can see, the custom team is applies, applying um, the appearance uh, a bit different. Here we have uh, like sky blue background color and sound buttons. And uh, yeah, um, if even custom theme does not fulfill your needs, you can also override uh, the built-in CSS styles of the uh, library. It's not covered in this, um, in this session, but um, wherever you need, you can always do it. So let's be back to our presentation. Yeah, and this is a conclusion time. Um, oh, sorry. Previous. And this is a conclusion time. Uh, so uh, we were using this um, survey JS in our project for like quite a long time to maintain a complex forms. And there are um, quite a lot of advantages of using it. Um, on my view, the most um, important advantage is a wide range of, of um, question types is an ability to add dynamic logic. It, it's highly, it can be customized um, as much as you need. Actually, um, JSON-based configuration gives you ability to um, create your survey in a more declarative way. Yeah, you can uh, easily maintain multi-page surveys and use built-in validation. Yeah, this is a pretty great advantages. But also there are some disadvantages. Uh, probably to get started with it, you will need to deep dive a bit into documentation. Um, there can be performance issues with large surveys. Um, it has limited free version. Paid version has a lot more useful features and documentation gaps. On my view, like documentation, it's not that um, 
deep as uh, it could be. Yeah. Um, actually, I think that's it from my side. Uh, it's time for your question now.